Imagine if you had your own AI tutor or your AI general expert to help you with anything that you're working on while you're on your computer, whether it's how to do some fancy thing in Excel spreadsheet or how to create a specific effect or editing technique in your editing software or help with building a website or advice on what you should do to improve your website. Well, imagine no more because Google's AI Studio can do all of this for you. And you know what? It's entirely free. And I'm going to take you through a couple of examples just to show you how kind of brilliant this is. Just by sharing my screen with AI Studio, it can advise me on what Ever I'm doing, as I said, whether it's a homework problem, whether it's advising me on what I should do about my website, whether it's helping me with the coding, or I want to do something in DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing software that I use for my videos, and I'm not too sure. Now, normally with these things, I'd go onto YouTube and I'd look up how to do it, probably scroll through a number of videos until I find the bit that I wanted, then focus on that bit that I wanted, and then maybe save that video for later if I ever needed it again. But it can be quite laborious finding the solution to your problem, following on, and of course, it's not interactive. And as you'll see from these couple of examples that I'm going to show you, even when I'm confused, I can interact with the AI, Google Studio AI here, while sharing my screen, and it can explain to me step by step what I need to do. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let me just show you. And remember, this is available to everybody. It's free. So here we are. As I said, go to aistudio.google.com. This is what you get here. It's great for creating some starter apps and stuff here, video analyze. You can analyze videos, upload photos to kind of analyze photos, Map Explorer, lots of different things you can do there. Uh, it'll help you build a prompt for large language models and stuff, help you build a specific prompt. But this is the key thing here, this stream real time. And this allows you to talk with Gemini Live while sharing your screen. You can show it stuff with your webcam as well, so you could hold up things. And we've sort of seen that before, and that's really cool. But it's the sharing your screen, share your screen to show Gemini what you're working on. So you can show Gemini what you're working on and it will kind of help you, advise you and take you through step by step and you can ask it questions. And the models are down here. At the moment, it's the latest Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental. And there's a few extra tools you can click here. But at the moment, we're just going to leave that blank. I'm going to go and, as I said, I'll take you through the examples that I've used. Okay. I'm working on this website and I want it to look more minimalist. Could you suggest a good font or typeface I could use? Okay, to achieve a more minimalist look, I would recommend using a sans serif font such as Open Sans, Roboto, or Lefato. Would you like me to elaborate on why I recommend these particular fonts? Yeah, especially Roboto. Uh, Roboto that, that's the one I think I would like to go with. Can you expand on that a bit more? Certainly. Roboto is a geometric sans serif typeface that was developed by Google. It is a modern and versatile font, which makes it a good option for a minimalist design. It also has a very clean and readable look, making it easy to read on screen. Would you like me to discuss any other features of the font? No. If I was to show you the code, could you tell me what I need to change? Yes. If you show me the code, I can help you identify what needs to be changed to implement the Roboto font. Would you like to show me the code now? Okay, I'm sharing the code with you now. Okay, I see the code. To change the font to Roboto, you need to modify the CSS rule for the body element. Currently, it states font family, sans serif. You should change that to font family, Roboto sans serif. This will ensure the browser uses Roboto if it's available and falls back to a generic sans serif font otherwise. Would you like to explore any other code changes? Okay. So could you show, I put Roberto Mono Sans Serif, is that correct? It's almost correct. You've put Roboto Mono, which is a different font, a monospaced version of Roboto. If you want the standard version of Roboto that I initially recommended, you should just have font family, Roboto Sans Serif. However, if you like the look of Roboto Mono, that is fine too. Is there I anything else? Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the Roboto Mono because I think I've seen it before and I quite like it. Okay, that sounds good. 
So you're going to stick with Roboto Marino. Is there anything else I can assist you with at this time? Have I spelt um, it all correct in the font family? Is that all the right way that I should spell it all? I see that you have Roboto Mono Sans Serif. You should remove the second San as it is already implied. The correct way to spell it is Roboto Mono Sans Serif with a comma between Roboto Mono and Sans Serif. This way, if Roboto Mono isn't available, the browser will default to a sans serif font. Would you like me to explain further? Ah, uh, sans. So is it with an S? San is sans with an S. And is there a hyphen between sans and serif? No, there is no hyphen between sans and serif. It should be written as san serif. Also, as I mentioned earlier, you should remove the second san as it is already implied. So it will be roboto mono sans serif. Okay, I think I've done that right. Can you confirm? Yes, I can confirm that your font family is now correctly set to Roboto Mono Sans Serif. Is there anything else I can help you with today? Okay, let me save the file and then we can have a look to see if that's worked. I'm going to show you the uh, website now so you can confirm whether you think it's worked. I've refreshed the page. Okay, I can see the refreshed page. The font now appears to be Roboto Monino. Does everything look okay with it? Yeah, that looks great. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. I'm glad I could assist you. Is there anything else you need help with right now? No, I'm all good. Thank you. Hi there. I'm working on this video in DaVinci Resolve. And I want to add a speed rump. Okay, you're working on a video in DaVinci Resolve and want to add a speed ramp. I can help with that. Do you have a specific part of the video you want to speed up or slow down? Or is it the entire clip? It's this entire clip that I've highlighted. Okay, you want to add a speed ramp to the entire clip that you've highlighted. Is there a specific part of the clip you want to be the fastest? Or are you looking for a gradual speed change? Uh, a gradual speed change. Okay, a gradual speed change it is. To achieve that in DaVinci Resolve, you'll want to use the Retime controls. I can walk you through the steps if you would like. Would you like to do it now? Yes, please. Okay, first, select the clip you want to adjust in your timeline. Then, right-click on the clip and choose Change Clip Speed. A pop-up will appear, allowing you to modify the speed of the clip, but to create a ramp, we'll need to enable retime controls on the clip. Once you enable retime controls, you will see a line across the clip in the timeline that represents the speed. Click on it to add speed points on it. At each speed point, you can drag the line up or down to change the speed. Does this make sense? Yeah, one second. One, so. Change clip okay. speed. Then I want to maintain, do I want to maintain timing or? I've got here okay. the options. Can you see the screen? I've got ripple timeline, reverse speed, freeze frame, and pitch correction. Okay, I see the options you're referring to. You have ripple timeline, reverse speed, freeze frame, and pitch correction. Since you're looking for a speed ramp, you'll want to adjust the speed using the retime controls which allows you to set points and create a gradual change in speed over the duration of the clip. Is there anything you are not understanding? Uh, so that's fine. So I, I'm using this box. Is, it, is that right? The clip speed or a different box? Yes, the box you are looking at in the inspector is the correct one to adjust the speed. But remember, you need to enable retime controls by right-clicking the clip to be able to set speed points. Once that's done, you will see a line across the clip and you will be able to click on it to add points to adjust the speed at different moments of the clip. Is this helpful? Uh, retime controls. I've clicked on it now. Yeah. Okay. So I've clicked on retime controls. Then do I add a Great. speed? Now you should see the speed line. Yeah. I see the speed line. Do I add speed point? Yes, exactly. Click on the speed line to add a speed point. From there, you will be able to create the speed ramp effect you are after.
Do you have any other questions? Okay. And then where do I, do I need to add the next speed point? You can add the next speed point wherever you want the speed to change again. For a smooth okay. graph. Carry on. Okay. If you need further assistance, please do not hesitate to ask. Okay, so, oh, I see. So by dragging okay, the everything... timeline, I, by dragging that timeline here on the screen, as you can see, I can either speed up the beginning or stretch it and it fits it in. Is that right? So it's 135%. Yes, that is correct. By dragging the speed point, you can make the clip play at 135% speed, making it faster. Or you can drag it down to make it play slower. Is there anything else I can help you with? No, that's great. I think I've got that sorted now. Thank you. So there you go. I hope you agree. Apologies I didn't share the full screen of my DaVinci Resolve, but you get the idea. And even on that example there, I was I, I was a bit confused. I couldn't quite see what it was referring to. And then it dawned on me. But that's the great thing with an interactive tutor. You can ask it questions if you're not sure. It's not going to get impatient with you. You can ask it to make it more simple for you. Make it more step by step. Break those steps down into smaller steps. So however advanced you are or not advanced you are, the capabilities of having an instant AI expert, AI tutor to guide you through stuff that you're doing on your computer Whatever it is, software programs, spreadsheets, Word documents, whatever it is, building an app, building a website, all these things, whatever it is, then it's pretty effective at doing it. Is it perfect? No, it's not like 100% perfect, but it's pretty good. And as I said, it's free. Anyway, there you go. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm always interested in how people respond to these videos and is this impressive? Is it something you're gonna use? And as ever, if you've liked this video, please hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, and it helps people like you find content just like this. And if you're new to my video, then do me the great honor, please hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I go live with videos just like this. Talking of videos just like this, why don't you check out these videos? These ones here, right here. Thanks for watching.